Hey guys, this is Robert from the Evolution Store. Today I want to talk to you about a couple of the skulls that we have. Um, two skulls in particular, but we do have a lot. You can see we got some human skulls. Uh, these are all the bone clones. Bone, bone clones are really great, very detailed. Uh, we have some really big ones over here. We have a hippo, a rhino, right? But we also have some more exotic ones, which is some of the ones I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, it's kind of a hot point topic in paleontology right now, but you guys might have heard of dire wolves. Um, you've probably seen them in shows like Game of Thrones or Dungeons and Dragons, any kind of fantasy stuff, but they actually, I want to say did exist, but not exactly. For years, we were calling this little guy right here a uh, dire wolf, and we believed that it was very closely related to actual wolves, right? So at one point we were calling this um, uh, Canis dirus, and we were calling this Canis lupus, right? But recently we've got some DNA from our dire wolves, and we now know that they are not actually uh, in the genus of Canis, which would be, you know, dogs, uh, wolves, coyotes, or I should say, you know, the ancestors of dogs, right? Um, we actually know that they are actually in a completely different genus, which is Aenocyon dirus, right? So that means terrible wolf. Canis dirus, um, I believe, means um, fearsome wolf. Yeah, fe or sorry, fearsome dog. Uh, and uh, it turns out that these guys were actually not as closely related as we originally thought. Now. They lived uh, about uh, 125,500 uh, uh, years ago, excuse me, uh, in the late Pleistocene to the early Holocene, right? So that's the Ice Age, right? Uh, we find a lot, and I mean a, a lot, a ton of these particular, um, I, you could say terrible, we should say terrible wolves now, because they're not dire wolves. Um, in the La Brea Tar Pits, uh, which is in uh, Los Angeles, right in the middle of the city. Uh, and when we pull them out of the tar, they've kind of been stained by this. You know, people often ask me, like, why is um, why is this bone this color? Why is this fossil this color? And I actually had a uh, professor tell, um, I asked the same thing to my professor, and he said, well, it's all chem and physics, which I know sounds kind of like a cop-out answer, but it's honestly the best way to answer it quickly and understandably. You know, you've got to think about the sediment, or in this place, the tar. It's not actually tar. It's more of like a natural asphalt. It's crude oil and mud that they're pulling out. But the idea is that, um, you know, thousands of years ago, it, it, well, it's been there for thousands of years. It's still there. It's still this pit of, you know, uh, tar. And uh, thousands of years ago, they would pull out, or, or the, uh, excuse me, a mammoth would get stuck, uh, or a buffalo would get stuck, or a, uh, I should say bison get stuck, or a uh, camel, sloth. Uh, there were a lot of animals living in North America that are no longer living, uh, but you can still find either the exact same species or uh, similar species. Um, and whatever would get stuck... Uh, you know, these guys would come along to eat them, along with any other predator in the area, uh, hearing an animal distress, and they would also get stuck. So this happened for thousands of years, and this big pit is a big black pit of bones, and it stains the bones, right? So that's what it's going to look like. It's not going to be nice and white like this, right? And most fossils aren't. Most fossils are stained by the sediment they're in or um, other chemical and physical properties that happen to them over millions or thousands of years, right? Now, one of the other things we pull out of these tar pits are that guy over there. I'll get a closer look in just a second. But that is a North American lion. Now, North American lions lived 340,000 to 11,000 years ago in North America. And they were very similar to lions that we have today, uh, being in Africa, right? Um, people don't really think about, oh, the, you know, a lion. I mean, we have mountain lions. We have things like that in North America still. But we don't have big, 
you know, lions that you see in Africa that probably would look a lot like this. Completely different species, but would look a lot like this. Uh, the area was very different. Uh, North America was very different back then. I mean, there were mammoths, uh, giant sloths, uh, like I said, terrible wolves, not dire wolves, but terrible wolves. And then there were also coyotes and, you know, camels. Camels were in North America. Camels were in South America. Now, we only find camels in two places, which is the Gobi Desert, which is where we get our Bactrian camels, our two-hump camels, and uh, the Sahara, right, uh, which is where we get our one-hump, our dromedary camels. Um, so that's pretty, these, that's all I wanted to talk to you about these, my favorite bone clones that we have in the store at the moment. But as you can see, like I said, we have plenty of different options to choose from. You know, we also have bone clones of human skulls, an orangutan right here. Um, so come on down, uh, check out our website, check out our social media, Instagram, um, Facebook, and I'll see you guys next time, all right? Have a good one.